introduce the next speaker, Dr. Andreas Wagner from Polynom Institute. So good morning. Thanks for the invitation to give a presentation about uh, our work here and uh, our view on the sizing and, and particle size topic in the field of, of liposomes, uh, LMBs. So for us, I uh, have to state right at the beginning that we are using the most useless technology because this is simply standard. This is how clients come to us and transfer uh, their processes, their formulations, and they are used to see these curves. <coughs> uh, and and what, what is for us important uh, is that we have a, a routine measurement set up to, to uh, fulfill uh, the, the, the data necessary to uh, uh, provide a, a certificate of analysis, and we are not so much into the characterization topic. So a few, so, okay, this is this direction. So we are a private company uh, located in, in, in Austria, nearby Vienna. Uh, currently we have about 80 employees and we are, we are working in, in two uh, complete separate areas. It's uh, developing and manufacturing of, of biopharmaceuticals uh, as well as for liposomal, liposomal formulation and LMPs for human application. Uh, we are a, certifi a certified uh, CMO. Uh, we have regular audits by the European authorities or uh, by the Austrian authority on behalf of, of EMA but we have also been inspected uh, by, by the FDA in 2013. And uh, as you can imagine, we have uh, a big number of, of audits by, by our clients uh, every year. So this is not. Uh, so how, how does Polymune contribute to the whole field? So we are on the one side formulation developer, we are process developer, and we transfer and, and uh, these, these projects to clinical trials and hopefully at some point to the uh, market application. What we also do is, is filling and we also support these programs from a clinical and regulatory perspective. So what is particle size and sizing in this field important for us? First of all, uh, most of my, my projects are in the field of injectable drugs. So for us, particle size determines the filterability, the 0.2 micron filterability. For sure, particle size is not the only point with respect to this. It's also about the particle concentration. We see uh, at, at uh, uh, lipid concentrations bigger than 80 to 100 milligram per ml, uh, also issues in, in achieving a, a good quality in the, in the final uh, sterilization step by 0.2 uh, micron filtration. Uh, furthermore, it's, it's, uh, for once uh, applied, it's important for the biodistribution. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, providing the, the, our customers with a CFA, it's a very important task for the drug product characterization and specification. And here, you have to define a, a specific uh, size and size range and polydispersity. So, especially for this technique, we see it's very important that it's a very easy, user-friendly technology which allows repeated measurement under the same conditions. In case of a, a process validation, we see the, the particle size, and I think everybody agrees here in the room, as a critical quality attribute. So part of the process uh, validation we have to show that this critical quality attribute stays the same and, and how it can be influenced by, by process parameters. We know that it can be achieved by certain processes and techniques, the particle size that we want to have, and it has furthermore in, an impact on the drug product stability as well as on the yield of our process in, in the case of API encapsulation and many other points. When we look at the structures, uh, the, 
that uh, we can create by using uh, all these uh, molecules. You can also imagine that this has an influence on the, on the, on the result of, of the measurements and the uh, way how it can be repeatedly measured. Uh, again, here, all these different structures can be formed, but we are mainly focusing on the, on the liposome LMPs or on the uh, small uh, B-layered fragments where we have uh, already guided projects into clinical trials. Uh, also very important for us when we create these structures, the, as, as you see here, the size range we are working in, as well as the molecules we are, we are using for these processes. We know, for instance, using these uh, PEG chain lipids, it has an influence on the particle size measurement itself. And for us, even more important, uh, we see a, a, a strong impact on the particle size and particle shape. Having PEG lipids in the formulation, it's much easier to get small, distributed, nice uh, shaped liposomes. We started uh, with a formulation based on, on, on ethanol injection, and, and we uh, proceeded to, to build a, a large-scale system using this technology. So we, we have a, a continuous flow-through system where our particles are uh, prepared. And therefore, it's very important for us also to, to see when we compare scale-up using the same technology at the small as well as on the big scale, which is uh, in, in our lab currently up to five, 600 liter intermediate volumes. When we see the, the, the process of particle formation, uh, what are the, these influencing parameters of the particles? And in addition to this, what is even more important, the change in this matrix uh, also influences the particle size measurement. So when we increase uh, the lipid concentration in ethanol, uh, and, and we mix this with the, with the aqueous phase. We, we know that we have to adapt in the, in the measurement step the particle uh, <coughs> concentration to measure at the same dilution, for instance. Uh, also the, the uh, consistency of the aqueous phase that we use for the processes has influence on the particle formation as well as on the particle characterization steps. The, the parameters listed here are simply the parameters we can use and we can play around to uh, prepare liposomes and LMPs uh, which meet our customers' needs from a size perspective. In the next slide, I will give you a, a few examples uh, on, on particle size, how we can influence the particle size by playing around with these parameters. For instance, when we vary the aqueous flow rate, uh, which is combined with the lipid ethanol solution, as well as the lipid concentration ethanol, we have a very nice uh, way how to influence particle size and, and size distribution. So uh, the, these data show you that the faster the aqueous phase is, is mixed with the, with the lipid ethanol, the uh, smaller the smaller the particles become, even with increased lipid concentration at the mixing point. The lipid concentration itself uh, shows an increase in particle size. And this is simply related to the fact that the point, the point where the lipid precipitates in the aqueous phase, uh, we can control particle size as homogeneity very well, because the lipids which precipitates form these planar bilayer fragments which by themselves encapsulate into liposomes. So this is how we can play around and, and how we measure uh, these results. What we also can see if we vary with the, with the solvent, the, by this we can also uh, vary particle size and, and homogeneity as well. Furthermore, uh, in, in this case, this was an, a liposomal adjuvant uh, we, we see that by decreasing the amount of aqueous phase, by keeping the lipid and ethanol constant, which means uh, indirectly increasing the ethanol concentration at the mixing point, we have also uh, a parameter how we can vary particle size. Uh, what we also do is we compare the, the microfluidic technology, which is used in, in many uh, labs now, and, and we, we 
when customers develop these processes, uh, we transfer this technology onto our more scalable technology. The mixing behavior and the way how particles are created is very similar. And the next slide uh, shows you some examples of chips which are freely available on the market and which we use uh, next to the herringbone structure chips, uh, which are well known in this field now. And again here, when we compare this data or when, when uh, clients, and this is what I mentioned right in the beginning, transfer their product and the process to us, the first thing we take a look at is, uh, can we match particle size and homogeneity? And here you see by uh, using different kind of chips and our technology, we can meet the, the, the drug product characteristic with, with respect to particle size very well. We also do some studies, and this is for uh, encapsulation of messenger RNA into liposomes. And we compared both technologies with different uh, process characteristics if you look at the flow rates and also different start concentrations of lipids as well as the mRNA. And during the processing, uh, we also have to take samples because for us it's very important to characterize each process step, also the uh, tangential flow filtration, which we see is a very critical process step for mRNA formulation because the particle size is somewhat different. We, were no, uh, we learned about the liposomes or LMPs where the lipids give the basis for the particle structure in the field of this mRNA formulation. We see this huge RNA molecule where the lipid arranges around. So this has an influence on the stability of these particles during uh, the uh, filtration process uh, due to the, 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 the shear rate applied. But as you can see, using both methods with the technology we use in-house, and I think at the polydispersity that you see here, DLS, we can agree, is a suitable method because this shows you that it's a very uh, monodispersed distribution. And you can see that using this technology, uh, particle size fits very well. As I mentioned before, when we do the filtration process, we also have to take care because uh, due to the, the change in the structure of these particles, uh, we have to especially take care of the, uh, of the constant shear rate that we apply. And this is very important when we do the, the scale up of these processes. And we have uh, seen over the, the last years that it's very difficult to, to transfer these mRNA formulations really into big scale and to uh, perform these filtration procedures without any impact on the process. That's it. Thank you. Any questions, Adriel? No, it's not an inline. It's a, a, a batch. Oh, it's a, it's a batch. Yeah, so. because the process itself is, is a very fast process, but uh, but we immediately take take the sample and 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 it's just separate experiments, okay. one one by the other. Okay. That's one interesting, and especially in the mRNA, where a little difference can actually impact on the yeah. entire batch. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you.